Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be working through the technique for calculating the hydrostatic load on a horizontal base. This video follows on from principles learnt in the previous two videos, where we learnt how to use the surface integral to find the centroid of a planar surface, and then where we introduced the techniques for calculating hydrostatic loads. I'll leave the links to both of these in the description, so you can check them out if you haven't already. So, to start off, Consider the situation shown here in the diagram of a uniform rectangular tank containing a static liquid of uniform density rho. The tank is open and the liquid's free surface is exposed to the atmosphere. The base and sidewalls of the tank are planar surfaces, with the base being horizontal and the four sidewalls being vertical. The liquid has a uniform depth of H0 and the tank has a length of L and a width of W. The coordinate directions, x, y and z, are defined as shown, relative to the bottom corner of the tank, with z denoting the vertical height above the tank's base, and x and y denoting the horizontal coordinates in the plane of the tank's base. For convenience, as we will see later, we also introduce the h coordinate, denoting the vertical depth below the liquid's free surface. And remember from an earlier video, we discussed that h is related to z, by h equals h0 minus z. With this information, and the techniques learnt in the previous videos, we will now work through how to calculate the hydrostatic load, f, and its corresponding centre of pressure, that acts on the tank's base, at z equals 0. We will let s denote the surface of the tank's base, which has an area of a equals wl. That is, s consists of the points from x equals 0 to x equals w, y equals 0 to y equals L, and z equals 0. The base is horizontal and has a unit outward normal vector n equals k. Therefore, taking the equations we learnt in the previous video, we have the hydrostatic force F equals minus Fk, with the force F equals the surface integral of P with respect to A. We also know that the gorge pressure distribution, in terms of depth h, is P with respect to H equals rho G H for H equals naught to H equals H naught. For a planar surface that's horizontal, the pressure must be constant at all points on the surface as the hydrostatic pressure does not vary in any horizontal direction. As the tank's base is located at H equals H naught, we can rewrite the gorge pressure distribution so P equals rho G H naught and this applies for all points on S. Therefore, as P is constant, we can factor it out of the integral, and so our equation for the magnitude of the load, F, equals the surface integral of P with respect to A, becomes P times the surface integral of 1 with respect to A. Substituting in our gorge pressure, we get F is equal to rho g h naught times the surface integral of 1 with respect to A, which results with rho g h naught a. And for this simple situation, we can see that f equals rho g h naught a is just the weight of the liquid that lies above the surface s. To find the point of action of the hydrostatic load on the base surface, or in other words, the centre of pressure of f on s, we will use moments. Let xp, yp, denote the centre of pressure for the load F, and let Mx denote the moment of F about the x-axis, and My the moment of F about the y-axis. With this, we have Mx equals Yp F, and My equals Xp F. Additionally, the moments Mx and My can be found using the hydrostatic pressure distribution. For this, we have mx is equal to the surface integral of yp with respect to a, and my is equal to the surface integral of xp with respect to a. Then, combining the two sets of equations gives fyp is equal to the surface integral of yp with respect to a, and fxp is equal to the surface integral of xp with respect to a. Remember from before that p is equal to rho g h naught and is constant at all points on s. Therefore, factoring p out of the integration and substituting in our gorge pressure distribution, we get fxp 
is equal to rho g h naught times the surface integral of x with respect to a, and fyp is equal to rho g h naught times the surface integral of y with respect to a. The surface integral of x with respect to a is equal to a times xc. So fxp is equal to rho g h naught a xc, which equals fxc, as we saw earlier, that f is equal to rho g h naught a. Note here that x subscript c just denotes the x-coordinate of the centroid of the surface S. Then, carrying out the same process for the second equation, the surface integral of y with respect to a is equal to a times yc. So, fyp is equal to rho g h naught a yc, which equals fyc. And as just stated, xc yc is the centroid of the surface S. Therefore, it follows that, in this case, the centre of pressure for the load F, xp, yp, is equal to the centroid of the surface S, xc, yc. To conclude, the magnitude of the hydrostatic load acting on a horizontal planar surface is simply the product of the uniform pressure over the surface, in this case, p equals rho g h naught, and then the area of the surface, in this case, a. The centre of pressure, which is just the point of action of the load, is simply the centroid of the surface. This result holds for any horizontal planar surface. So that then is how we can calculate the hydrostatic load on a horizontal base and find the point of action of that load. In the next video, we will calculate the hydrostatic load and the point of action of that load for a vertical end wall. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.